Hey everyone, Roger here from Astacar Experts YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing some rear brakes on an X5 F15. Here's the tools you're going to need to get the brake job done. It's good to have a hammer. I have torque wrenches, a wire brush. It's good to have a pick and a small screwdriver and a large screwdriver. You're going to need an Allen set. Nice to have. This is a flip socket, an 8mm. You're going to need your 17 for your wheel lug. For an X5, you're going to need an E18 inverted torque socket. This is a half inch. You're going to need a pair of pliers, obviously your wrenches, and something to take the wheel off. I do prefer this Milwaukee M18. It's a great tool. I will put a list of recommended tools in the comment section if you're interested. I just did the fronts, moving on to the rears as a separate video. A couple things to go over in case you're just doing the rears. To remove this cover, to keep an eye on your brake fluid, there's just a little plastic rivet here that comes out, this lifts up, and then you can move it out of your way. I did have to remove a little bit of the fluid while doing the front. If this overflows and leaks down in here, this can actually cause the paint to separate. Brake fluid actually destroys paint. So you want to make sure to not get brake fluid everywhere and you don't want it running down onto the underbody panels. Make sure to chalk the wheels. BMW does have certain specific lift locations so you can find the pad under there and just set up. I like to use a piece of wood to protect the driveway. I do have both sides set up to make it easier. And always make sure that you use stands for safety. I'm going to show you how to do the right side and the left side is the same procedure except that you don't have to replace or you don't have to install a new replacement sensor. Uh, the sensors are only located in the left front and the right rear on BMWs. First step obviously is take your wheel off. 17 millimeter. I do have one already out because it was a wheel lock. If your rim does not want to come out, if you take one lug, put it back in the upper hole. Now I can spin this because I have the other side up. Give the back side of the tire a whack. You can mallet or set up a pry bar and hit the right spot. Like so. Okay. Hub. Get that out. Get the tire out of the way. Remember to make sure that your e-brake is not actuated on this. Right, I can spin this by hand so my e-brake is not on. All right, my third rain brake is over. When has it not rained in New England lately? I don't know been crazy. Alright, so we want to take out using a 6 millimeter the locator screw. After getting the wheel off, these screws are one time use. I'm going to take the spring off, just pry inward or rather outward. And then I'm going to use the brake pad to compress the piston. All right, take it off the stand so you can see. Do a little twist and use your screwdriver. You can actually pre-compress your piston. I stuffed you in the wheel well with me. So you want to take the cap off the bleeder screw because that's also what holds your brake pad sensor. So make sure you put that back on or else it can rub on your tire. So there's not much room back here. So this one here, I'm gonna take the caliper off separate than the whole bracket. You can get the whole bracket, but you need some extensions, long extensions in here, and maybe a swivel. I think it just might be easier to show you this way. You'd have to pry out this cover here on the top and the bottom. 
but it's easier to take the whole carrier off. All right, so I have both of these off. All right, you're gonna need a seven millimeter hex or, I mean, I guess you can call it an Allen screw or an Allen tool. Usually once you loosen it up enough, you can back it out by hand. This is for the caliper slide. All right, right there, that's your caliper slide. We're gonna clean that up before we reinstall it. Gotta do that now on the bottom one too. All right, I'm on the bottom. I think I'm gonna have enough room to be able to just get the socket in here. I'm gonna show you a trick in case you don't have room with the tools that you have. Don't have room, you can take a ratcheting wrench, and this is, let's tell you the size, right? That'd probably be helpful. Eight millimeter, and this slides over. And now I can use this to install or remove if there's not enough room. Okay, I'm going to take that slider out. That's going to free up the caliper. I'm going to just pull the sensor out. You're not supposed to reuse it because the spring retainer usually doesn't stay. So we will be replacing that. Take the bracket off. This pad just floated there, that's fine. I'm gonna just set this up here. I'm gonna take this pad off. Now I have to take the caliper bracket off. All right, I'm gonna use a step down from half inch to three quarters on an E18. And hopefully that will give me the leverage and the angle I need. Loosen that up, and I fit nicely there. And once these loosen up, which the tightening torque is 110 newton meters, they come off by hand pretty easy. These are one time use screws. So when you're doing a brake job, you need this hardware. The slides that I took off are not one time use, they can be reused and retorqued. Realistically, this brake job is a lot like its predecessor, the E70, the F15. Technically, is the same for this style of brakes. Take the bracket off. We're gonna clean that and lubricate it correctly. And the next step is to take the rotor off. Okay, you're gonna just tap gently break any of that uh, rust that has accumulated between the hub and the rotor. And since I'm not reusing my rotors, I can hit it on the side. If you are reusing this, and for whatever reason you're taking it apart, you want to keep tapping gently until it pops free. But I'm not doing that, so... All right, so always take a look at your e-brake shoes. When you have this off, make sure you have no separation. Everything looks good, this is beautiful, so I don't need to worry about that. Can clean and lubricate the hub before you put the rotor back on. Just use a wire brush. They do sell some fancy ones that go over the whole hub, snap on does, and cleans it using an electric tool. The wire brush does the same job. Just put a little bit of lube on here. This is just anti-seize, and I don't need to have it be thick, just a light layer. So next time I do a brake job on this car, this will come right off for me.
and install my new rotor. Give it a little wiggle and a little mate. And this is 16 newton meters. Okay, battery's getting low. So tighten this screw, locator screw, to 16 newton meters. I can tap it. Make sure it made it in. One more time. Okay. All right, a caliper bracket. This is where your pad rides. If you do not clean the corrosion off of these spots and lubricate this, your pad can stick. And when it sticks, it can't release, so that there's an air gap. It will continue to drag and it will wear one side of the pad more than the other. It's very common, we see it a lot. I see it a lot, I should say. So I'm just gonna clean. And I'm gonna put some lubricant on these locations, be right back. I got my new hardware, and I'm just going to lubricate. You don't want to get it all over the place. I do like to get it on the back side of the slider too though, where the pad sits. <clears throat> or the, like the bracket for the pad. Just so it's got nice lubricant to slide on and not stick and cause a problem. Next is going to be installing the bracket. So the bracket just floats. This is the, the carrier bracket to the spindle bearing. Now you never want to leave anything tight, not tightened and walk away. Right, so someone, my wife calls me, if I stop and go in, and I had this tightened down by hand, that would be a great opportunity to F something up. Right, this would come loose, I've seen it happen. I've never, had, I've never done it myself, but I've seen other people do it. Um, this comes off, the brake caliper kicks up, and it just cuts the room like a can opener. Splits it wide open. Actually, I was test driving a car for another technician when that happened to me from their brake job. Pretty shitty. All right, so that's hand tight. I'm gonna tighten that right now. All right, this is 110 Newton meters. And hopefully, no, I'm gonna have to do it from down here. Here's camera's right in my way. But you guys are gonna get the benefit of this video, so. Sorry, I'm breathing on you. <laughs> All right. All right, 110. Come on. Find your happy place here. Okay. I'm happy. Check it, 110, double check it, 110, okay? All right, moving on to the next step. All right, must be nice to get out of that wheel well, right? Oh man, can you see? Yeah, all right, should be good enough. Let me move you a bit. Okay, I'm gonna pop off the old pad, verify that my Piston is retracted all the way, just using a pair of channel locks. It is, it can't move it more. Alright, 
so I don't want to leave that hanging. But so you lubricate the back of your pads. Do not lubricate this surface here, and lubricate the slider areas on the sides. Alright, line that up. They're just springs that push in like so. Okay, and for the other pad, I don't like to just put it there on the caliper. I like to place it right against the rotor, bring my caliper down, and just have that hold everything in place like so. I'll take my sliders and a little bit of 3 3M Scotch Brite and remove any build up on them. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put it in position and slide it in, and you can almost feel when you have it lined up right. And that was a seven millimeter. And these get tightened to 30 to 35 newton meters. So once again, you never want to leave anything loose. You want to go ahead and make sure you tighten these up. All right, I ran out of disk space and um, almost battery charge but I did torque this because I didn't want to walk away without having it torqued. But the sliders for the brake caliper are 30 to 35 newton meters. You can see I torqued it there. And there. Okay, so the next step is to put the clip on. If you find that this clip feels weak, these are replaceable and you should just inspect them and replace them as needed. If you have a higher mileage car, not a bad idea to replace it. You just push them on like so. And I always like to take the back of the screwdriver, tap. Make sure they're seated. Okay, so let's just see. We tightened the caliper bracket, 110. We tightened the sliders to 30 to 35. Put your caps on. Don't forget those, that keeps the debris out. And now, all we have left is the sensor. So you will need an eight millimeter socket. We have to take a couple of uh, screws out of the side panel here. All right, there is a plastic rivet here. I just used a pair of dikes to pull this stupid thing out. And then usually this will pop off. All right, it's very dirty. <laughs> that aside that just goes back inside reusable this one doesn't want to come out if I catch it go underneath you can pop that out using some leverage and I think we need the eight for down here there's one here because we got to pull this back this should come out there's just so much dirt in here driving I always like to put that back in so I don't lose it. Under here, it's an 8mm. Then pull this back to get to right here is the cover for the sensor and you just pull down on the side. Of course, I'm just going by feel. There you go. Oh, I got it. <laughs> right, that comes down. And then we just follow our brake line, or our brake sensor from here. All right, this goes under here. So this has to open up see this right here this, this actually just is a cover that comes off and on so just go side to side 
work that cover free. All right, that's it right there. Put that down. There's a little groove that this sits in. So just pull it out from there, comes up, goes to a holder right there, right back there. And that's straight down. So just gonna pull that down. I'm gonna put the camera down or else I'm gonna smash a knuckle. All right, this is that little holder, pull that down, get a screwdriver, just gently pry this back. One, two, that opens up these so that you can continue feeding your brake sensor out. And it's the same thing here, just a little gentle twist, pop those free. And then I'm over here at this cover. This is the one I want, so you can figure out which one it is. You don't unplug the wrong one. All right, pull it down and press tab, slide out. New sensor. Lock that in. All right, there's a locator right there. Slide that up, close the box up. And then it's just really a matter of feeding it back around. Now it was on the back side of this sensor here, right? That has its own slot and that has a slot and then you just lock these back in like so. Right there. Sorry, I did that and you couldn't even see. Alright, so right, these each have their own little locator spot. I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. One and two, and then these just press back on. Alright, and then as I continue, I'm going to feed this around the shock. And then same thing here, it doesn't matter really which one you're in, as long as it's in one of these brackets. Okay, right here. Now I want to be on the other side of that. I'm working around you, Mr. Camera. So I'm just going to feed that through. So I'm on the right side of the correct side of the bracket, which is the left side. <laughs> right, then there's just a metal tab that this goes right into. If you need to, you could lubricate it so it goes in easier. And then same thing here. You can kind of go by feel. This is going to come this way. Here, and then it just goes into the channel underneath. Once you just guide it back into that channel, then you have to put your holder on. That looks like that, belongs like that. It's good. And now you want to make sure right here at the bleeder screw, you want to use that to hold it, that cap. If you don't, it could rub against the tire. And then Simply lock it in to the pad. There's a little groove in the, in the rotor. And you can take a screwdriver just to make sure it's fully seated. Give it a push. And then you can gently tug it, make sure it's not going to come out. And you're good to go. Go back to your wheel arch. We have these to put back in. One and two. in and don't forget the eight millimeter on the bottom up here okay and now it's just a matter of putting the tire on and torquing it down to 140 newton meters 
like to load up the socket. And obviously I'm working on the ground. Can't okay. tear up. These things are heavy, but my legs and then slide it down to the hub. Once you're on the hub, just keep pressure and wiggle. You can move it to the point where it lines up. Hold pressure. Take your socket, which is loaded up with your lug. And once you get one in, you're good to go. Alright, lower the car. And 100 and 40 plus or minus 10 newton meters. Make sure you always step on the brake after doing a brake job to seat the pads and to make sure there's no air gap when you put the car in reverse because otherwise you could go to the floor and have no brakes and hit something. Verify your brake fluid level is good and install the cover back on. Okay, just lining up the tabs, very easy. And then right here you have a push rivet. Plastic one. And that's all set. And the final step is make sure you have the key. I'm in the vehicle. I'm gonna go a triple press on the button here. One, two, three. Oh, actually, no, this is not a G-Series. It is just a single press single press to turn the cluster lights on and I wonder what service he's doing oh probably oil oil change press and hold the left instrument cluster button and wait says oil change yeah he's gonna have that done front brakes 3100 miles so I'm gonna press and hold again on the left instrument cluster button and it should tell me Reset, yes, let go, press and hold again. So I wasn't paying attention. Reset in progress, let go. As long as the sensor reads right and there's no problems, it changes. So 40,000, and I did the rears too. Press and hold, reset, reset, press and hold on that left button again. And you can let go once the reset is in progress. And he knows he's got an oil change he has to do that I'm not doing here. And that's it. Now take the car for a gentle test drive after doing the brakes to, to bed them in, do some light braking. Um, that coating comes off the rotor as you're braking and avoid hard braking for 500 miles. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my Asset Car Experts YouTube channel. And if you can, give this video a thumbs up. Be greatly appreciated.